it's Mitch again with my 1925 Ford Model T and in this video we're going to be taking a look at safety with tyres and um, particularly um, the kind I have on my Model T which are demountable split rims. Uh, demountable meaning you can actually separate the rim from the wheel itself with these four lugs and split rim as the name implies, the rim has a literal split in it, so if you get a flat tyre, if you need to take the tyre off the rim for whatever reason, whether you're changing the tyre or um, repairing the inner tube, um, what you can actually do is collapse the rim so the tyre is a lot easier to get off. Now, of course, as we know, you don't get something for nothing. The, the, the advantage of having the split rims, of course, is it makes it a lot easier to get your tyres on and off, but the downside, of course, is there is an inherent danger with these type of rims. Um, it's not unheard of for one of these rims to actually um, fly out of the tyre um, while someone's been inflating it and actually cause them some very serious injuries. Um, so what I'm going to show you in this video is basically the, um, some little tips and tricks to show you how to safely inflate these tyres um, without uh, injuring yourself. So what I'll do first is I'll show you the, um, uh, what's actually inside um, a split rim and then we'll move on to uh, um, inflation. Okay, so we're taking a look at the uh, spare on the back of my Model T, and you can see there's one of the four lugs that hold the rim onto the wheel, and there's the standard valve stem, and then this little part here um, is actually your lug which holds the rim together. Now, there's a couple of different types. Um, this particular type has actually got a bolt which holds the rim together, which is probably the better of the two in my opinion, um, and the alternative to that is a basically a swiveling lug which basically locks into, a, uh, into the rim to hold it together. Um, the lug one I do have on this car, um, prefer I didn't. Um, these bolt ones are actually better because, um, because you've got a bolt that actually threads in. Um, the chances of the rim coming apart is actually greatly reduced. But there you go, that's what the rim looks like inside. Um, now we'll go ahead and do some uh, safe inflating. Okay, so before we uh, move on to inflate this tyre, it is a little bit underinflated at the moment, um, we do need to secure the rim so in the unlikely event that something goes wrong, um, the rim doesn't come off and uh, injure me. Now, if I was to be doing this in a professional workshop, um, I would actually have a cage in which I would place the, uh, the whole uh, rim and tyre arrangement so, um, and then connect up my airline to that and inflate. And if anything went wrong, it would all happen in the confines of a cage. But since I don't have that, then I'm going to resort to using Ingenuity, which is what they would have done back in the day anyway. What I'm going to use is a piece of uh, a length of rope here. It actually has to be my tow rope. Um, it's basically just half inch rope. And what we're going to do is basically just tie the rim and tyre and the wheel, tie them all together, like so. Grab the other end. And we'll tie the other side as well. Not the best quality rope in the world, but it does the job. And now, as you can see, the it's tied on both sides. Now, if you do find yourself in this situation where you are using rope um, to tie off your uh, wheels and uh, tires like this, um, is to never actually sit as I am, never actually sit right in front of the, the face of the wheel like this when you're inflating. Reason being, this rope is, is quite strong, but there, of course there is always the chance that something might go wrong. It's always a good idea to sit um, completely behind the wheel like this, or ahead of it, but never sit right in front of the, uh, in front of the wheel itself. Um, okay, so let's move on to uh, inflation. Uh, I don't have to mess around with the manual pump, I do have an air compressor here. Um, only thing is my air gauge doesn't work, so I have to use a separate uh, tyre pressure gauge to uh, measure what I've got in there. Okay, so now we've safely, now we've safely uh, tied off the uh, wheel there. I'm going to go ahead and put some air in this tyre. It is underinflated, as I said. So we're going to take that back up to 35 pounds. 30 to 35, that's about the uh, right pressure to run at. A bit more than that, I think. A little bit more air. And that 
looks about right to me. I'll just check it with this gauge to make sure. I'll try again. And as you can see, there's about uh, roughly 30 psi in that tyre at the moment, which is adequate. Okay, so that's the basic uh, procedure there. As I say, if, you, if your Model T does have demountable split rims as mine does, which were actually a, a luxury back in the day, um, the base model, uh, Model T, only came with what we call clincher wheels, which means you had a just a full seamless rim. And they were, they were all right, they worked, but unfortunately when you got a flat tyre, you had to really wrestle with the tyre to get it off with tyre levers and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, whereas if you were um, able to afford to buy the uh, demountable split rims, uh, you, were, you were doing pretty well. It was a lot easier to, uh, to uh, repair punctures and that. it was a lot easier to get tyres off. And as I say, these ones are uh, balloon tyres. The uh, clinchers were much uh, narrower than these. Well, I hope you found this video um, uh, useful, and uh, and uh, if you have any questions, um, just let me know. Catch you next time.